this morning we're working our sky blue dragon blood peacocks. Not too long ago we did the sky blue red OB dragon peacocks. This has a little bit, well it has a lot of overlap in, in genetics, but it, it lacks the OB except for something I'll show you in a minute. So I've, we've already put up the females. We had too, way too many males in the breeding colony. What we're going to do is do a beauty contest with males in a minute, but first let's talk about some of the genetics. In dragon bloods, the gold body color, by the way, all the females we put up are gold. The gold body color is a dominant characteristic to the gray or wild type color. That's unusual in cichlids. Usually gold is uh, a recessive. OB in dragon bloods is also recessive characteristic. That's atypical. Most OB, all the other OB peacocks, OB is a dominant allele, dominant characteristic, and the, the wild color or non-OB color pattern is recessive, but in dragon blood is recessive. So the gold body color is dominant, non-OB is dominant, so I'm going to show you what happens when these are some older males from a previous breeding cycle. They're good sky blue OBs. Uh, they're not good dragon blood OBs. Again, that blotching pattern is a recessive characteristic in dragon bloods. And so these, these came out of an earlier breeding of non-OB, sky blue OB dragon bloods. And, and in our offspring this cycle, we got a few OBs, so at least one of our males and one of our females is heterozygous is carrying the recessive OB. Okay, this is another fish from an earlier breeding cycle. And it is, missing the red uh, coverage of a typical, settle down guy, uh, of, of a typical dragon blood. And if you look carefully, he's probably an OB. It's hard to tell on a light body colored fish. Impossible in an albino, but if you look that orange, it's kind of blotchy. So he's probably an OB. Okay, now then let's take a look at what happens if you are homozygous for non-gold and homozygous for a gene I call pastel, which causes, and I'll do a whiteboard on this and show you how it causes the sky blue color pattern, and I'll talk about it again when we do the males. These are a couple males from previous breeding cycle, and they're homozygous for non-gold, and they're homozygous for pastel which makes them a pale blue. Now let's take a look at a fish that is not, well, of course, <laughs> well, you have to take my word for it. This fish is normally a lot bluer than those are, but they've been in white buckets and he's scared. This is a blue dragon blood. And the, the, these two fish have pastel, but we'll, they're nice looking fish, by the way, but they're not what we want in this strain. But again, that fish is homozygous for non-gold, the recessive to gold, and is homozygous for pastel, which makes it a pale blue, even though he looks darker right now. Let's put these guys up and then we're going to see he's got some nice red in him. Okay. So now we're going to look at males and let's have a beauty contest. These are the six males that were in the breeding colony and that's too many. They harass the females. So we're going to cut this down. Since we don't have a lot of females, we're going to cut it down to two fish. This guy is a little bit too red for a sky blue. Uh, he's a sky blue, but he's got too much red in the face and fins and in the body. So we're not going to use him. Same thing with that guy. Uh, 
it's interesting how the, the the blue and this happens in dragon bloods the angle at which you're looking at the fish changes the color i think he's too pale of a blue don't you think i kind of like him you like him i don't know you're right he's nice he's good. okay okay get me a bucket of water I think I like him. And we'll pull two more of those out, then we're going to look at four other males. Okay, of these, probably he's best. What do you think? I the one in the middle. You like the one in the middle? Okay. He's too red. So I got the right one for you. <laughs> okay. I think so. Let's look at these four males. These are were BRUs. They're now big enough to look at to see whether any of them are good enough readers. I think this guy. Yeah. Okay, Kate, those two males can go to the breeding colony. And we'll sell these meals. One of these days, I'm going to set up a, an auction and let people bid on the males we don't pick. But we need to get Greenhouse 3 rebuilt so we have room to segregate those fish. Okay, I think we've looked at everybody. So we're uh, the two best males are going to the breeding colony. I added some young females to the breeding colony and tried to get it up to full speed. Okay, my producer director wife telling me I need to look at the camera. So I will do that momentarily for a second or two. Uh, I prefer to look at the fish than at the camera anyway. No, you're, the camera's hiding you. So... And I get to look at you all the time. I only get to look at the fish when I have them out here. We don't get to see the fish in the vats very well because they're opaque sided. So we just get to see fish from above. Okay, we will do a whiteboard on this to talk about the genetics. We're going to experiment with a new whiteboard and possibly take photos and tape them to the board of the fish so that when I'm talking about the genetics, I can point to the fish. Good fish keeping.